Hello everyone. Welcome to the online session, an initiative by Department of Collegiate and Technical Education. I am Kirti. I am a lecturer in Civil Engineering Department, Government Polytechnic at Sanna Sandra, Bengaluru. In this session, we will be covering chapter number 4, Dampness and Prevention of Dampness, Unit 2. This is session number 9. I hope you all have watch the video on session number 8 because this is going to be the continuous, continuation of the last session, previous session. We'll have a quick re recap of the last session. In the last session, we had discussed about the effect of dampness. So effect of dampness as we had discussed that even if the moisture content is same in any two building materials, the effect of dampness will be different. So we had discussed the ill effects of dampness that is uh, metals getting corroded, uh, wooden members getting rotten. Dampness also gives rise to breeding of mosquitoes and other. It also helps in accelerates in uh, growth of termites, accelerates in growth of micro microbial activity which gives rise to a lot of diseases like tuberculosis. We had discussed all these in the previous class and also um, it also affects the electrical fittings, fails the electrical fittings which uh, in turn uh, causes leakage of electricity and short circuiting um, and it also softens and crumbles the plaster. It also bleaches the paint and it also creates colorful, not colorful, the other color patches on the wall. It also causes efflorescence and it also leads to deterioration of the bricks, stones, tiles and other construction material used. It also loosens the floor covering. The dampness also creates uh, buckling and warping of wooden members and these were the uh, some of the effects we had discussed in the previous session and uh, we had also discussed about the methods of prevention of dampness which is a very important topic in this particular chapter. The first method was by using damp proof course. We had discussed this. Uh, the damp proof course is the continuous layer of impervious that is the layer impervious means uh, the layer which does not allow the moisture to pass through it that is called as impervious. Uh, a layer, a continuous layer, is, a layer of impervious member is provided in between the source of the dampness and the structure which is exposed to dampness. So uh, that is called as damp proof course providing damp proof course and that damp proof course can be any material like bitumen, mastic asphalt, bituminous felt, polythene sheet, metal sheet, etc. Flexible material we had discussed. And um, uh, the PC damp proof course can be horizontal or even vertical. And the second treatment we had discussed was by surface treatment. In the surface treatment, the pores of the surface is closed which is exposed to the moisture is closed with the help of water repelling compound by painting with the help of water repelling compound and that water repelling compound can be uh, liquid or uh, it will be in a liquid form and it, it the example for water repelling repellent compound is calcium and magnesium oleates stearate and uh, other uh, other uh, uh, compounds like bituminous solution, cement coating, transparent coating, painting, distempering can also be provided on the surface. Um, the commonly used uh, surface treatment is lime cement plaster which is very economical. And the next treatment was by integral waterproofing method. In this method, we, uh, we had discussed this earlier. The waterproofing compound is mixed with the cement mortar during the mixing. During the mixing of mortar, the compound, waterproofing compound is also mixed. 
and uh, this waterproofing compound acts like a protective barrier it does not allow the water to pass through it so uh, the amount of water proofing compound to be added is recommended by the manufacturing company and the example is silicate alkaline aluminum sulfate and calcium chloride it acts with the cement and it produces a compound which fills all the pores on the surface which is exposed to dampness and the next method we had discussed was cavity wall cavity walls we had discussed um, uh, it will have two leaves or the two walls the inner wall and the outer wall separated by a cavity or the empty space and we had also discussed about the specification the thickness of the wall and the cavity uh, and uh, the other advantages of cavity wall like insulation to heat sound and it also is the most effective method of preventing the dampness the next uh, method was gunitting in this particular method uh, uh, rich cement mortar is uh, deposited under pressure over the exposed surface the, the surface which is exposed to dampness that surface has been uh, deposited with the rich cement mortar so that process is called as gunitting and the last method which we had discussed was pressure grouting the surface is the normally all the structural components will have cracks and voids those cracks and voids are uh, filled with filled or forced under pressure the cement grout cement grout is applied under pressure uh, and filled um, uh, the cracks and voids are filled with the help of cement grout and uh, this is very effective where there is seepage from the soil uh, where there is a chance chance of moisture entering from the soil into the foundation so that uh, moisture is being cut off by pressure grouting so these were the methods which we had uh, method of prevention of dampness which we had discussed in the previous session moving on in this particular session we will be discussing about the requirement of the ideal material for damp proofing the materials generally used for damp proofing of structures and some of the multiple choice questions and the reference okay the first topic is requirement of an ideal material for damp proofing so what are the properties that the material needs to have to become a damp proofing material so we are going to discuss about the properties an ideal property so the first property is the material the material used for damp proofing should be durable it should be strong and durable it should be capable of withstanding both dead as well as load without damage if if there is any other load coming on that particular damp proofing material it should be able to take its own weight dead load and the other weight which is coming on it without failing that is the first criteria first requirement the second requirement is it should not allow any movement in itself that means the material should be such that it should be sturdy and it should not allow any kind of movement in itself it should not move it should be sturdy the next point is it should be perfectly impervious we are providing the damp proofing because we want to prevent the moisture entering through it so uh, the basic necessity is it should be perfectly impervious so impervious is impermeability it is a phenomena in which the material does not allow the penetration of moisture or water content through it that is called as impervious nature or impermeability next is be able to resist the load coming on it so if the damp proof coat is provided for the wall or for the floor it should be able to take at an amount of load without failing and the damp proof uh, uh, material damp proofing material should be flexible it should allow a certain uh, it should accommodate certain moments without 
any fracture it's not crack it's not fracture it should allow some amount of movement so that is the criteria next is the material should be dimensionally stable okay then it should be economical it should not be very expensive it should be cheap it should not contain sulfates chlorates and nitrates uh by uh, if if damp proofing uh, material contains sulfate chlorine and nitrate nitrate it should be harmful it it might be harmful to the structure so it should not contain all these compounds i hope this slide is clear uh, i can also recall or uh, summarize this uh, slide once again uh, the material used for damp proofing should be durable and strong it should not allow any movement in itself it should be sturdy it should be stable it should be perfectly impervious it should not allow any water or moisture content to pass through it it should be flexible it should um uh, it should uh, uh, be flex uh, it should be flexible uh, as we had discussed earlier like bituminous felt ash mastic ash wall they are all flexible material which are used for damp proof dimensionally it should be stable it should be economical it should not be expensive it should not contain sulfate chlorate and nitrates moving on to the next topic materials that are generally used for damp proofing of structure okay the first material we can classify the materials into two types that is flexible materials and rigid materials actually there is one more category called as semi rigid materials but we'll um, take it in a general way we'll discuss it in a very general sense here so uh, which are classified in classify it into only two types that is flexible material and rigid material the first one in flexible material is bitumen mastic it is also called as mastic asphalt mastic asphalt is a semi rigid material it is quite durable it's very durable it is completely impervious and um, it it is obtained by heating bitumen with fine sand by heating bitumen with fine sand it uh, a, a impervious mass is um, compound comes out that compound is called as mastic asphalt as you can see in this picture this is the mastic asphalt provided for damp proofing the second one is bitumen felts it is also called as bitumen sheets bitumen felts they are very flexible material it is easily layable material you can easily lay it on the surface you can easily place it on the surface and it is available in the rolls as you can see in the picture it is a kind of roll you can just roll the material over the surface and it is available in the normal wall width and uh, it can be laid on cement mortar a cement mortar layer is laid and over which this uh, bituminous bitumen felt sheets are rolled and fixed the next material is hot laid bitumen hot laid bitumen is highly flexible material and uh, it 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 is applied in a thickness of 3 mm is placed on the bedding of concrete or mortar a mortar layer is laid or a concrete layer is laid on which hot bitumen is poured in hot condition after it cools cool cools down it forms a flexible material which is uh, which helps in prevention of dampness which acts like a damp proofing material next one is metal sheet metal sheets for the metal sheets we can use lot of metals like copper aluminum lead they all prevent the dampness but they are very expensive uh, let's uh, take the first one sheets of lead sheets of lead uh, sheet of lead 
Cheetah Sled is a, a damp proofing course which is highly impervious in nature and highly resistant surface, surface. It is water, highly water resistant and it also provides excellent uh, resistance to lateral movement. It is embedded in lime mortar and uh, the lead sheet cannot be laid uh, it, by itself. We have to coat the lead sheet with the help of bitumen to protect it from corrosion. The second one is sheets of copper. Sheep, sheets of copper, they are embedded in lime or cement mortar and they possess high durability, good resistance to dampness. And they have very good uh, resistance against sliding action. It, they do not slide. The sheets, copper sheets, they do not slide. And they are, they are very good in uh, prevention of dampness. And the third one is Sheets of aluminium. Sheets of aluminium is also provided, used as DPC, damp proof course. Uh, and uh, when we are providing sheets of aluminium, we have to provide a layer of bitumen over the aluminium sheet to protect it from corrosion again. The next material is plastic sheet. Plastic sheets are flexible in nature. As you can see in this picture, black. Plastic sheets are also called as black polythene. These black polythene sheets are provided on the wall surface in the mid, uh, while construction of the wall for damp proofing. This is a very new type of damp proofing material. The thickness of uh, black polythene is about 0.5 to 1 mm. And the length is equal to that of the length of the wall. The next material is brick. Here comes the rigid material. The materials uh, till now what we discussed were flexible materials. Now we shall start with the rigid materials. The first one will be bricks. Special bricks are used. The bricks which has the water absorption less than 4% of its weight, those bricks are used for damp proofing. Those bricks are used as damp proofing coats. Uh, bricks are used where the dampness is not excessive. And bricks are laid in two or four courses in cement mortar. You know the water courses are, courses mean layers. So bricks are laid in two or four layers in cement mortar which acts like damp proofing coats. The next one is stones. Generally we use dense sound stones as damp proofing coats. Again the stones are laid in courses, layers for it to become DPC, damp proof coat. Slate, granite, Trap. These are some of the stones we use for damp proofing. We can, you can see the picture here showing the stones acting as damp proof material. The next one is mortar. Mortar can actually be used in two ways as a bedding layer or as a waterproofing plaster. As a bedding layer, if it is uh, if it is used as a bedding layer, again a DPC material is applied on the mortar. So mortar is playing as a bedding layer and a DPC layer is laid on the mortar. Otherwise we can also use a mortar as waterproofing plaster. For bedding layer, cement and sand is mixed in a proportion of 1 is to 3. One part of cement and three parts of sand is mixed for bedding layer, mortar as a bedding layer and lime is uh, mixed with this mixture. For waterproofing plaster, one part of cement, two parts of sand, polarized alum and so water is used. The next material is cement concrete. Cement concrete uh, is uh, mixed in a proportion of 1 is to 2 is to 4. Generally, 
and they are provided at the plinth level with acts like a damp proofing coat. The depth of the cement concrete varies from 40 mm to 150 mm. The thickness, the thickness of the layer, cement concrete layer which acts like damp proofing coats. The thickness of it varies from 40 mm to 150 mm and it helps in stopping the capillary action. Capillary, it, it helps in capillary cutoff. So, uh, this is about the cement concrete and this completes the materials that can be used for damp proofing. Now, let's move on. Um, uh, I, I think uh, you are uh, pretty clear, pretty much clear with this topic. I can uh, summarize all the materials that is used for uh, damp proofing. As we discussed, we have two types of materials which can be used for damp proofing of any structure. That is a flexible material and rigid material. In the flexible material, we have bitumen mastic or it is also called as mastic asphalt. This consists of bitumen mixed with fine sand which is in hot state. It forms a impervious mass which acts like a damp proofing coat. Next is the bituminous felt, bitumen felt or bitumen sheet. It consists of 6 mm thick sheet of bitumen prepared in roll. You can see in the picture width equal to that of brick wall. Hot laid bitumen. They are highly flexible. 3 mm thickness of this hot laid bitumen is laid for damp proofing. It is laid on cement, cement mortar or cement concrete bedding. Metal sheets. Metal sheets of copper, aluminium, lead can be used for prevention of dampness but it is very expensive. Sheets of lead, sheets of copper, sheets of aluminium are usually used. Plastic sheets is a very rare one, a new, uh, new idea. Polythene sheets, black polythene sheets of 0.5 to 1 mm thickness is used and the length equal to 30 meter is manufactured. Next coming to the rigid materials, first one is bricks, special bricks having water absorption less than 4% of its weight is used. And uh, it is bricks can be used only where there is no excessive dampness. Next one is stones. Dense, sound stones are used. For example, slate, granite. They act as a very good damp proof course. Next one is mortar. As I told you, two, mortar can be used in two methods. As a bedding uh, mortar or waterproofing mortar. Last one is cement concrete. 1 is to 2 is to 4 proportion cement concrete is provided at the plinth level of depth, of thickness. Depth means, depth means thickness 40 mm to 150 mm. So this completes the topic for today and uh, let's move on to multiple, uh, multiple choice questions for the same topic which we covered today. First one First question, dash is a flexible material and it is easy to lay and is available in rolls of normal wall width. Answer is mastic asphalt. Second question, dash is a semi-rigid material and it forms an excellent impervious layer of damp proofing. The answer is bituminous felt. Third one, dash material is made of black polythene having a thickness of about 50 mm to 1 mm. We just discussed about it. Answer is C, plastic sheet. 
Fourth one, dash absorbing water less than 4.5% of their own weight can be used for damp proofing. Is it mortar, stones, cement concrete? No. The answer is bricks. Fifth question. Flexible material used for damp proofing is mastic asphalt is the answer. Last question. Cavity wall walls are constructed to is it constructed to carry uh, increase the thickness of the wall? No. Is it constructed to carry heavy load? No. It is constructed to prevent dampness. So answer is B. So I have provided some key answers to this. Hope you have got all the answers right. Let's go to the references and uh, references. Uh, I have uh, taken the information, the content from all these textbooks and e-learning sites for my PPT and uh, notes. For the detailed information, please refer the e-notes provided by the LMS team and also these textbooks for any other detailed uh, information. The first reference uh, is Building Construction by B.C. Pumnia, Building Construction by P.C. Varghese, Building Construction by S.C. Rangawala, Building Construction and Materials by Guru Charan Singh, Building Construction by Sushil Kumar, Construction Technology by H.S. Vishwanath, Sand Foundry Global Education and Learning Wikipedia, www about civil.org www.civilengineeringnotes.com so thank you this is the lms team we have created the whole construction technology content all all of us together thank you if you like the session please like it rate it and for any other detailed information as i mentioned earlier please refer the notes Thank you.